Hi, I'm Erin Bow, the author of Plain Kate. It's three days till the launch of my book, and to celebrate the last few days before the book's released into the wild, I'm doing some readings from it. Today I want to read from Chapter 2. A stranger has come to Kate's little town of Samale. He's selling music by day and charms by night, and now he's coming over towards Kate. <laughs> him come. He moved like a jumping jack that was strung too loosely, so that he seemed about to turn it a flip or clatter into a pile of bones and string. His zupan's loose skirt swirled around his knees, and its undone sleeves swung as he walked. Every man in Kate's country wore such a coat, but on this man it hung like a costume. Kate wondered if he was foreign. His strange, witch-pale skin and hair made it hard to tell, and the white coat bleached him further making him look like a painting that was half washed away. Lovely lass, he drawled, leaning sharp elbows on her counter. I hear you work wonders in wood. Now, plain Kate had caught no fish for two days. Nicky's bread was gone, and she was hungry. But she was required to turn down work, and she did. There's a guild shop, she began. He laughed elegantly. Master Chunny, boxwood for brains, dead twigs for fingers, no, no little knife. I want someone with some feeling. You see, he widened his eyes at her, I've suffered a loss. And he drew from his back, where it was slung like a sword, a length of wood. He set it down in front of her. The thing was the size of a small branch, polished and curved. The back of the curve was splintery and broken, like a bone. A snap string squirrel curled around it. Plain Kate picked it up. What is this? A courtier to the queen of all wooden things, he said. Plain Kate raised an eyebrow and waited for a more sensible answer. It's a bow, he said, a bow for my fiddle. And he half sang, a walker, a wanderer, a trader in tin, a roamer with a violin. My name is Linné, and I grant wishes. Just then, Taggle sprang from nowhere and landed neatly in front of her. He stuck his long nose into Linnae's pack. Plain Kate picked him up. The cat squirmed and then relaxed into her arm and started to purr. She eased him onto one shoulder and he slunk around her neck, where he draped bonelessly like a fur collar with gl glittering eyes. Why, said Linnae, no silver mink could match that. And he reached out to chuckle the cat's chin. Taggle bit him. Linné pulled his hand back and smiled with many teeth. Sweet-tempered little beast. Plain Kate had recovered from the strangeness of Linné's singing in his eyes that shone like new tin. She ran a finger down the broken bow. Mm, I think I could make you another. What can you pay me? Hmm, Linné leaned close. I could write a song about your eyes. Kate avoided snorting at a paying customer, but she answered shortly, Something I can eat. Linné smiled, slow as a fern uncurling, and sang, What do you wish for at night in your dark drawer? What do you wish for, plain Kate? And as he sang, he reached out and brushed the side of her face with bony fingers. His hands smelled of herbs, and something shot through her like ice on the neck. She leapt backwards. Now, that's a wish, he said, smiling at her distress. But I wouldn't. To raise the dead, that's a tricky thing and goes wrong most often. Plain Kate was panting. I don't want you to raise my father. Oh, of course you do, orphan girl. All folk want their dead back, and I should know. I've spoken with the shadowless, and how they come shambling, how they come hungry, how they come wrong like a bird in water. Stop it. Linnae laughed, merry but not kind. Well, what do you want? Beauty? Luck? I sell them all. He leaned in, smelling bitter as burnt spices. Of course the trinkets are nonsense and fodder for fools. But I have true power and a will to use it. It's more than the work is worth, but we might trade. What do you want? she said. Your shadow.
His own f shadow fell across the table between them, and it seemed thin to Kate, swirling, as if cast by smoke and not solid flesh. If you give me your shadow, I'll grant the secret wish of your heart. But why? Why do you want it? Ah, he winked at her. I know a lady who lacks one. She must have been gaping at him because he crooked a finger under her chin to close her mouth. Taggle swiped at him lazily, Lene jerked to clear his smile, folding up. I've been listening to the talk in this town. They say your shadow is long and no one loves you. You are luckless and defenseless. Do not doubt that I can twist things until you are glad enough to give me whatever I like. And suddenly his smile was back and the roiling edge of his shadow was gone. But in the meantime, what about my bow? Would you like a beauty charm, perhaps, in payment? Plain Kate. On his tongue, her name was suddenly the insult it had once been. I'll take turnips, she said, or fish hooks. Fine wood, maybe. Coin on the off chance you have it, but I'll have no deals with witches. Won't you now?